That's an that. insane thing. No, no shot. Oh, Give me the hammer and the spikes. Well, I'm putting well, it up there. If someone can do it, it's Ethan. He'll find a way. I'll, I'll do it again. Okay. I liked it the first time, and I'll do it again, Nick. I'm getting on a call with all my Jewish brothers and sisters. Well, there's 30 minutes left. I really want to make Dan proud. Let's let's. I'm. You know what I'm planning this Christmas? No. A mock no, execution no, no, mm -mm. of Jesus Christ. No. Dedicated to <laughs> Nick Fuentes. Doing my part. So you could sit in your parents' basement and cry about it. Yeah. And I'd do it again. Give me the spear. Uh-oh. I'll, gonna, I'll do it gonna, again. You're going to piss off the weird hysterical nerds, dude. Good. If Jesus was here on a cross, I'd that, swear him. Uh, no. All right. That'd be funny if you got banned no, for I'm not that. Get That's an that. insane thing. No, no shot. <laughs> Oh, Give me the hammer and the spike. Well, uh, okay, we, we've we've seen enough of that. I didn't realize it started halfway through. Um, yeah, barf emojis. Like I, every uh, stream now is starting off with a gag reflex. Whether it's at least we have a bunch of options in the gag vomitous um, bag, so to speak. Trudeau, uh, press secretary Jean Pierre, Biden, Kamala, Christian Freeland. Now we're adding in uh, Ethan Klein. Because, you know, the best way to respond to what people are referring to as anti-Semitic vitriolic rhetoric is to come up with stuff like that because that's quite clearly absolutely a beyond reproach. You can't get angry at that because they're joking. Uh, but when Kanye comes out and either sincerely as a troll or as a symptom of a mental breakdown comes out and says things which are objectively offensive, there it's outrage. But when it's jokes, it's not. And the, the irony about that edginess, which we've seen time and time again from Ethan Klein, it's not edgy and it's not even new. Sarah Silverman had a bit. I don't, I'm going to get in trouble, I think, for this, but we'll see. Now, I'll, I'll say this. Um, I don't think anybody should get canceled for that. Sarah Silverman's delivery is good. Her content, her substance has been good in some respects. I don't find that funny. I don't find it outrageous to the point where people should be canceled. What gets me in all of this, and we're going to get into it today because we have Carl Benjamin on. This is like, I say it's, again, it's surreal because it's just such an evolution of the existence on the interwebs. I now get to interview a man whose who's, uh, legal drama I was covering three years ago, pre-COVID. Uh, I don't have any problem with edgy, offensive, outrageous, over-the-top humor. I don't find those particular bits funny. Uh, the context makes it somewhat less funny, more uh, antagonistic. It's the hypocrisy, or as some are going to call it, the hierarchy of the jokes. Feigning outrage, but when they do it, it's a joke. When their enemies do it, it's unforgivable, cancel, destruction, deplatform, unpersoned. When they do it, it's a joke. It's satire. Okay. Uh, Barnes and Carl are in the backdrop, people. Uh, you may have noticed, yet again, one of the, one of the symptoms or signs of evolution on the interwebs. Uh, there was a thing that said, this stream contains a paid promotion. And it does, people. And today, it'll be different tomorrow, but today, it is the air filtration system in Viral Cleanse Pure. Christmas is around the corner, which means most people are going to have um, family members visiting them, which means that they're going to have dirty, filthy, germ-infested children running around the house, sneezing their boogers, touching all the crap. Uh, for those who know that you need a, a high-quality air filtration system, it doesn't require much selling. You just have to make sure you get the good one. This is the good one. For those who don't know that you need one, uh, there could be nothing more important than the air that you're breathing. Germ-free, uh, volatile, organic, compound-free, Enviro Cleanse. We had a filter back in Canada. It was a it was a piece of rubbish, and it wasn't a cheap piece of rubbish. Enviro Cleanse filter is what you see here: uh, a big fat HEPA filter in the front, a patented technology in the filtration system which has minerals which neutralize vo VOCs, volatile organic compounds, odors, uh, chemical smells, um, bacteria, germs to smaller than the coronavirus. Um, not all home purifiers are made the same. EnviroCleanse is used by the military. That may impress some of you. That may not impress some of you. Doesn't matter. I'll take for granted. If the military uses it on submarines, it's good. 
It's in 300,000 schools across the United States. Holiday season is coming up. Uh, keep those filthy germ bag children. You know, if you have children, you get used to it. We're going to talk about that today as well. But uh, it will keep your family safer. Very quiet, beautiful, sleek, matrix-looking thing. Uh, EKPure.com, Enviral Cleanse. EKPure.com, promo code RUMBLE. 10% off, free air quality control. And I thank the sponsor for having the audacity of sponsoring the Hinge Fringe Minority who interview people with unacceptable views. And as far as the hierarchy goes of people with unacceptable views goes, Carl Benjamin is high on that list. And I swear to you, I've dug into his past. I've known of Carl for years. At first, I knew what I thought of him based on reputation, based on hyperbole. I can't think of anything that can possibly justify the reputation that some people have given to Carl Benjamin. It's going to be fantastic. Barnes is in the back. Okay, so we're going to bring in... I'll bring in Barnes first. Then I'm going to bring in Carl. See where he goes in this. Nope, Carl does not go on the bottom. I go on the bottom so that when I bring in chats, get a real job. Community trust, this is my real job. I was fishing this morning for an hour, listening to a Carl Benjamin interview, caught five small bass, and I'm like, this is, this is a fortunate existence to have this. I get to learn as a job, and then I get to interview people about whom I have learned as a job. Carl, I was, for the two minutes that we saw each other before, I said, it feels like we know each other already. I've been following Carl for five years now. <laughs> uh, Carl, just in case anybody doesn't know who you are out there, 30,000 foot overview before we really get into it. Uh, my name's Carl Benjamin. I became famous because of Gamergate, and I now run a website called LotusEaters.com, and on YouTube and Rumble, you can find us at the podcast of the Lotus Eaters. And that is Lotus Eaters, people. It's in the um, pinned comment, whatever. I mean, we're going to get to it, but what does Lotus Eaters even mean as a concept? I know I should know it, but I don't. No, no, it's it's honestly the one of the one of the main problems with the internet these days is actually uh, if you're going to start a business, well, good luck finding something that isn't taken, right? Like it's the internet's been around for a good couple of decades now, and there are billions of people on it, and so good luck finding a brand that you can make your own that's not already sort of so, something that's imprinted in people's consciousness. Um, and I was uh, I was studying a, a bunch of things, and one of them was the Odyssey. And I actually quite liked the concept of the Island of the Lotus Eaters because everyone uh, outside the sort of extra canonical texts of the Odyssey, oh, that means Island of Drug Addicts. But actually, if you read what it says in the Odyssey, there's no mention of like, you know, uh, drugs or like them being uh, like in any way insensible. Uh, all it is is the Island of the Lotus Eaters, the first island that they come to on the journey uh, from back from Troy. And they're the only island that they're not trying to kill them. <laughs> and so they give them the lotus flower to eat. Which, And then they're like, you know, what? I think I'd just rather stay here than carry on because carrying on seems crazy. Why would I do that? And uh, Odysseus drags them in back to the ships and then sails on back to Ithaca. And everyone except Odysseus dies on this journey. And so it felt like just a reasonable uh, metaphor for what's happening at the moment. Like there's, there's currently a global elite that's dragging us back to the ships and they know we're going to this destination. It's like, yeah, but I've got a funny feeling we're all going to die on the way. And I actually would just rather stay where I am right now. Actually, I, I don't really want to go with you. And uh, we don't seem to have that choice. So that's, that's the inspiration for it. Now I knew you as uh, before our Carl Benjamin, I didn't even know Carl Benjamin existed. I knew you as uh, Sargon of Akkad uh, from various cultural commentary and the rest, which was fantastic. What was Gamergate? What inspired you to get into the space of making commentary? Uh, no. And why Sargon of Akkad? Okay, so I I'm I'm old as you can see by the white beard, and uh, when and uh, like we're the sort of same generation, in fact, aren't we? And it was it was just a common thing that the internet back in the day was kind of an unknown frontier, and it wasn't really safe, so you didn't put your real name on the internet. And so this was, you know, when I was like in my twenties, it was just a gamer tag that me and a friend, a friend of mine, used to use Gilgamesh. I used Saga Account. It was, you know, just because I was a fan of the historical time period, and I didn't think anything was going to come of me starting a YouTube channel. Uh, and so I'd, I'd started it in like 2010, but I didn't upload anything for like three years because I wasn't, you know, I, d I didn't even know that there was, you know, a space on YouTube to be a commentator really, and I had no desire to be one. Uh, so it was just something I could use to subscribe to channels. And then in 2013, uh, I noticed that, well, 
insane feminist activists were invading the gaming space in which I operated. And I was just kind of frustrated by it because I thought that their arguments were, well, illiberal. And so I started making videos just being like, look, these are things that are wrong. And uh, about, I don't know, I had like something like 20,000 subscribers. And then uh, about six months in, Gamergate started. And I could see that Gamergate was a reaction that I was trying to talk about, that it was a bunch of blue head feminists who are like, well, men are evil, video gaming is evil, and anyone who takes in it is obviously a misogynist. And I was like, okay, I mean, it feels quaint now to, to say it, now that in everything that we know about where this ideology has come from, what its intentions are, and what, it in, what its end state goal is, it just, at, at the time, and I, I do look back and think, oh, we were naive. Um, at the time, I just thought they just didn't really understand what they were talking about. And so I was trying to explain from the liberal perspective what I saw the world to be. Um, and then my channel just kept growing from there, basically. That's where I learned that you were apparently uh, an alt-right. Uh, I don't know if they used the term incel at the time, but definitely misogynist. We'll, and we'll get into the Gamergate thing in a second, but mm. I, we got to back up a little more. How old are you? I'm 43. When we, uh, do you give your birth date out? Um, well, it's 1979. Okay. I, I'm just wondering if I'm, I, I'm May 1979. And am I older than I'm, you? I'm, I'm, I'm younger than you. Yeah. Yes. Okay, good. But I've got yeah. a more white beard than you. So. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well that's, I, I've got, see, I got, I got a circle over there. Um, yeah. Carl, I mean, I always like to delve into infancy, childhood parents, because I think it does help understand mm -hmm. how a person became who they are today, especially in demeanor and philosophy. Uh, how many siblings were you from? What did your parents do? What was your childhood like? Uh, my dad was in the RAF um, since, uh, you know, before I was born. And we grew up, therefore, moving around on different uh, military bases. I spent eight years in total living in Germany on JHQ, which is the joint headquarters at Rheindalen, Mönchengladbach. Uh, between, I think, about three and six and 13 and 18, or no, 13 and sort of 16, 17, roughly. About that time, my memory is getting a bit hazy because it was a long time ago now. Um, and so they were my sort of really formative years. Um, just a standard family, two parents, uh, me and my younger sister, who um, is wonderful, obviously. Um, my my home life was great. My parents were broadly conservative, but not very ideological, um, thankfully. And so they were not really interested in politics. But because we grew up in a military family, you are, and and also a lot of it outside of the United Kingdom, um, you become, I suppose, what you'd say is more patriotic and more attuned to what is your own culture in comparison to what is the foreign culture you're constantly in contact with. Um, so it became, when I when I moved back to the United Kingdom, obviously I didn't think anything of it because I was in like 17, 18. But in, it, as I grew older, it became apparent that there is something wrong with the culture in the United Kingdom at the moment. It's kind of poisoned, I would say. And it's not right. Uh, and you didn't get this in the sort of 90s and early 2000s, in the military culture, at least. I mean, you do you get it now, because obviously it's everywhere. Uh, but it was, it was just kind of the sort of stock patriotic uh, environment that you would be in. You know, we, we had British flags around because we were living on a base in Germany. And whenever you went into the German community, you got a very, it means very sharp distinction between what was the British base and the German community outside of it? Because we were living on a colony um, because Germany had lost a war. Uh, and so you you got a very clean and clear sense of what was foreign and what was not foreign. And so coming back to the United Kingdom in the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, the Labour government took over and they started to try and essentially erode the concept of Britishness and erode the sort of concept of the distinction and, and particularness of our country as compared to Europe and the rest of the world more widely. And I suppose that's why I occupy the kind of political space that I occupy now, because I can say from firsthand experience, um, we are different to them and them being the Germans or any other foreigner. You know? And, and, and any, any country has a different culture to another country. And it becomes obvious when you know what you're looking for. Do you think if Gamergate never happens and, and, and all the things related to it in the sense of this this attempt at cultural monopolization by sort of the, by the woke elite of every single uh, in, in, you know, instrument of cultural transmission that exists? They weren't just satisfied with media control and Hollywood control. 
They had to invade comics. They had to invade Star Trek. They had to invade Star Wars. They had to invade Marvel. They had to invade even video games. Do you think if that had never happened, you would have gone on your political path, or do you think you may have never gone on that political path? I think that there's probably not a future in which uh, the woke left can operate and not try to colonize every space in which they see uh, life, energy, and problems, right? And the things that are problematic. So I can't imagine that we can envisage, I can't really envisage a future where there are a bunch of woke feminists colonizing comic books and saying, well, actually, we won't worry about gaming. We won't worry about films. You know, I, th I think they, they're compelled to colonize everything they can and try and pacify the world for social justice. Um, but uh, I, I think I probably wouldn't have been, uh, it, it, let's assume though that they hadn't gone after the hobby I was into. I find it hard to believe that I would have just continued on with my life without somehow coming into contact with this extreme left-wing philosophy, uh, because it's just so aggressive. <laughs> it wants to monopolize every space. And so it's, it's hard to believe I could have just continued on with my life without experiencing it. And I suspect that it was... I mean, I, th I find this sort of social justice ideology so antithetical to my own values that I would have felt morally compelled to push back against it. So I imagine I would have ended up on this path somehow, to be honest. Carl, I, I got to do this. I hope it, you don't find this too uncomfortable. Have you read your Wikipedia page recently? <laughs> I mean, you have to, this is, when you say that you, you don't think uh, they wouldn't have infiltrated something you did end up loving to get you politicized. Yeah. This is... What I initially, it wasn't like this when I initially read it years ago, but this is how people who don't understand how infiltrated Wikipedia has become would, would understand you. Carl Benjamin, also known by his online student Sargon of Akkad, is a British far right anti feminist YouTuber and political commentator. A former member of the Eurosceptic right wing UK Independence Party, he was uh, one of its unsuccessful candidates, uh, yada, yada, yada. During the Gamergate harassment campaign, Benjamin promoted the conspiracy theory that feminists were infiltrating video game research groups to influence game development. Since Gamergate, he has focused promoting Brexit, criticizing feminism, Islam, identity politics, as if I, that makes you far right. And I, sorry, just to just to interrupt, I I actually agree with all of that. <laughs> well, I say it's the it's the far right and okay, you know, I guess it's the far right story. It's that's it's hilarious. But I, Robert and I, with other guests, have talked about Gamergate. But it, 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 for those who may not know your personal experience, what it, what was your personal experience with Gamergate? How you got sucked into it and ended up obviously getting demonized by your involvement with it? Yeah. Uh, well, before before I answer that very quickly, I think it's important to note that, that uh, terms like left wing, center, and far right are relative political positions, right? And so, if you are a left wing extremist who thinks that the entire world around us is irredeemably corrupted with white supremacy and patriarchy and is a colonialist oppressive regime that is holding various minority groups down, then yes, you will see a sort of more conservative perspective as being, quote, far right. But that's only because of your particular distance to the left from where a reasonable people group of people cluster. So I actually have stopped taking exception to the term far right because if they meant Nazi, they would simply say Nazi, right? <laughs> and so, and also, I mean, that, that I, I consider fascism and Nazism an extension of socialism, uh, and I'm very much against socialism. So if they meant Nazi, they would say Nazi. And so when they say far right, I just think, right, okay, you're a really left-wing person. Got it. You know, I understand. Um, and the rest of it, honestly, was fairly accurate. I do object to all of those things, actually, uh, in pretty much the terms that they say. And so, I, you know, I, I don't see them as being bad things, you know? So they, you know, they weren't using any derogatory labels there, really. The only thing that, you know, one could really take exception with, I think, is far right. Um, but again, I, I don't even take exception to it these days. So, well, uh, no, um, in defense of me, harassment <laughs> campaign it implies something that didn't happen. Conspiracy yes, theory that, fe that feminists were infiltrating, which is why you'll explain what actually happened, because they refer yeah. to it as a conspiracy theory. Others might just understand that that's actually what happened. Um, yeah, it was a conspiracy fact, actually. <laughs> um, it was a theory, don't get me wrong, because I, I was just reading their research papers. And uh, I can't, you, you have to figure me, because this is like 2014, so it's quite a long time ago. Uh, I can't remember the names of the academic feminists involved, but there's, the, 
people gravitate to the subjects in which they're interested. And so you get a very sort of fairly narrow slice of academic feminists out of all of them that essentially agree on basically the fundamental premises of what academic feminism is. Uh, and you get a slice of them that are interested in, oh, video games. And then you get a slice of them that are interested in comic books. You get a slice of them that are interested in yada, yada, yada. Um, one, one great YouTuber I'd recommend is The Fourth Age, uh, who goes into the academic feminism that's infiltrating the comic book industry. Uh, it's not my speciality, um, but he he's fantastic, and I love every, all of his videos. Um, so I was concerned about what was happening in video games at the time, uh, and so I just went and read their papers because, of course, these things being so remote and cloistered and away from the mainstream, at least when they were writing them, they're just online. You, know, you could just find them. It actually wasn't hard to get them at all. And so I got them, read through them, made a bunch of videos explaining, look, they're planning to essentially launch some kind of feminist jihad against the video game industry. And uh, lo and behold, we went through a feminist jihad in the video game industry in about 2012. And then in about 2014, it became so insufferable. Like, you know, I think Gaming at the peak probably had about 50,000 people who were just like, look, we are just sick of your moralizing. You know, let us play our video games in peace and leave us alone. Um, and then when, for, for example, Gaming Gate was actually a majority sort of centrist left wing uh, phenomenon, actually. You know, there were like, you know, you know right wing people involved. But when when the large body of people just basically did a, a you know political compass test, you know, they were all compiled. It was very much uh, liberal left uh, because there were people who just didn't agree with the identity politics and just wanted to be left alone, really. Um, so yeah, so it, you know they say conspiracy theory. I mean, is that even a bad term anymore? You know, I'm sorry, there are, who who isn't a conspiracy theorist these days? And how many conspiracy theories have actually turned out to be false? Just out of interest, you know. I, I don't take exception to any of it anymore. And I mean, I I got into GamerGate when studying to bet on the 2016 election there uh, in uh, the UK, where you can you know bet whatever you want on a presidential election. You could in America, which is I still find wacky, but. Uh, but I was noticing this whole new group of young populist inclined, independently oriented uh, people on the right, the sort of the, the Donald Reddit that became the Donald win and all that, the salty cracker fan base, uh, the meme makers that were all over the place that were exploding in something I'd never seen. I mean, I've been around politics for forever, never seen anything like it. And I was like, where do these kids come from? And I started digging in and the most common origin story was Gamergate. That like they were just kids hanging out. A lot of them, you know, used to be lefties or just not care about politics, just chilling. And all of a sudden they're getting harassed by feminazis uh, wanting to take over their culture and corrupt media. You know, gaming media. I mean, it was called Gamergate because of gaming media people having pri uh, uh, undisclosed relations and conflicts of interest with gamers they were promoting, with game makers they were promoting, who were promoting crap games along with a political ideological uh, motivation as part of it. Um, the and, and so it was fascinating watching that whole thing uh, evolve and kind of explode. It was a counter-revolution. It would have been in the mm. interest of the wokesters to stay away from the comic book world, the Marvel world, the aspects of uh, Hollywood and sci-fi and fantasy, uh, stay away from it in certain parts of literature, stay away from the video gaming place. Because there they ended up rousing a quiet lion that was otherwise kind of asleep at the wheel of the culture wars taking place. The other thing that's influenced this is so many of the kids, so many people 30 and under who have who have been exposed to this at every level, exposed mm -hmm. to it on social media, exposed to it in their schools, whether it's the uh, all the way down to you know kindergarten basically these days but that they were seeing it before a lot of us were seeing it i mean the idea just 10 years ago uh that barack obama's positions would now fit wikipedia's definition of right wing in other words i mean his opposition to gay marriage his opposite yeah. i mean a range of things that were his position in 2008 not that long ago now wikipedia said this is far right and lunacy um, i mean just to just to have that point home actually um I I really can't tell much difference between Donald Trump's positions and Bill Clinton's positions, actually. Uh, the, Donald Trump really is just a 90s Democrat. It's just the culture shifted so far to the left. That became a far-right position. Uh, and okay, fine. The, the, the thing that was interesting about Gamergate that hadn't happened before, there had been resistance to social justice before, but it was always quite uh, small and um, not tepid, but 
insecure in its own foundations. But interestingly, Gamergate went on for about a year. And that is a really long time for quite a cohesive group of people who didn't otherwise have any particular connection to one another to put up an active resistance. And so I think this is the reason that Gamergate has become kind of seared in the minds of journalists, and not just video game journalists. You'll see the New York Times and the Washington Post and things like that talking about Gamergate as if it's some perennial boogeyman. Because even though Gamergate didn't win, um, I think they they it, it set the model for actually you can have long term activist pushback against social justice, and it can. I, I think it really it was kind of like their Vietnam. To be honest, I think <laughs> I actually I actually think they really saw, they took it very very badly. Uh, even even though Gaming Gate didn't win that one, you know. Um, so uh, yeah, no, it's, it was it was good to see, and there were a lot of interesting people who came out of it. I mean, you know, a bunch of people sort of crashed and burned, but like, you know it's the internet there's a lot of energy you don't know what's going on you, you know this is all new new territory new experiences so uh you know you can hardly blame people for not and you know and all, another thing as well this is all very organic like no one no one was like trained or had any kind of preparation no one went to these debate clubs they're not from uh impressive universities these are all just regular people who are like look we've just had enough of this you know and we're not we're not taking it and we know the kind of people you are your sort of vicious vipers, and we're not having any of it. Uh, and so the fact that people sort of held on for a, at least a year, I think is very impressive, actually. Yeah, and the other thing is, like, before my stepson, I was a skeptic of games in general. And I, was, I thought that was something, you know, dropouts and potheads play. You know, the uh, that was kind of my stereotype of it. Uh, was not, I mean, I liked video games as a kid, like the arcade games as a kid, but, you know, in limited dosage, I thought otherwise. But my uh, stepson loved it. I mean, just absolutely uh, uh, was really found a home there and the rest. So I did more research. And what you find is that a lot of people that play those kind of games actually have above average mental acuity, develop a wide range of social skills. And what was most fascinating to me was he was finding a community, a community mm -hmm. he could connect to and relate to when he'd been through a lot of transitions in his life. And it totally changed my perspective on video games. I mean, I don't know if video, if, uh, I mean, well, Viva's already a fan. So I don't know if he's teaching his kids to, to love it as well. But it, it, and that was the other thing that was so offensive about what they were trying to do. They were trying to ruin something that was a good space for young men, especially who are being widely attacked or being disconnected economically in the Western world, their economic opportunities being stripped, their marital paths being rerouted and diverted, drugs being in uh, just dumped in their communities and mass, particularly mm -hmm. in the working class regions that used to have industrial employment, their neighborhoods collapsing, their families falling apart in terms of their mother and their father. And here was a space where they could have fun. They could have meaning. They could uh, develop skills. They could find community. And now it's being attacked by a bunch of wokesters who know nothing about it whatsoever. Uh, what was your Just original? Uh, Go ahead. Yeah. Well, the thing is I've actually, uh, as I've grown older and become a father myself, I do actually come in a sort of concordance with your initial point there. So it is a waste of time to play video games, right? You're not getting anything productive done. Uh, and so I view video games these days uh, as something you do after you've done your work. You know, you go, you, you, you go, you work hard. And then in the evening, after you've had a long, hard day of work, you know, play a video game for an hour or two, that's fine. Um, but there is also the flip side to this, which is, people who essentially pathologically play video games and spend all of their time on video games and actually don't get out of the house, actually aren't getting sunlight, aren't getting social interaction, aren't learning new skills, aren't reading books. And I mean, like anything taken to excess, it becomes bad for you. So everything within moderation, but there's nothing wrong with video games in and of themselves. Uh, it's really about, again, with most things, it's about how you interface with them. So uh, just to make sure that I, I, I don't come across as being excessively permissive there, because I'm actually a total tyrant with my own kids. Uh, my, my son gets to play video games for a couple of hours on the weekend, assuming he's good all the way through the week, uh, which makes me more tyrannical than the Chinese government, actually. Um, but uh, but I, feel, I feel like I should be. <laughs> I, I say nothing brings out the hypocrite and adult like becoming a parent. <laughs> for, okay. for anybody who doesn't yet know, is it, I, I'll, I'll break the rules all day long, but the second my kid swears or puts their feet on the table or, you know, it is unclean, I leave drawers open all the time. Kids do it, parents get mad. Yep. Um, we're going to move over to Rumble right now because I got uh, the question about your first, you, you got canceled in to some extent before it was cool to get canceled. Yeah, Everybody, yeah. You're, you're the reason locals exist. It's, it's, <laughs> um, yeah. It's amazing. So we're going to move over to Rumble now exclusively. So I'm just going to end on YouTube. See you all over there. 
Uh, actually, right after I just bring up this super chat that just came in on the bottom here. Sargon, your keto Sharia has no hold on us here in the CCP Canadian <laughs> province of Poutine. The corpse diet of mankind can sit on the golden toilet all at once. All right. Well, hey, and with the, all, all I'm saying is you can't deny the results, right? You know, I, I've lost a lot of weight and I feel really great. So I'm just saying it worked for me. We are ending on YouTube, going to Rumble, three, two, one. See you all there next.